we have the uh, the risk warning on the screen here. Let's just get through that. Okay. Any questions at all, please feel free just to use the, the chat window or the, the Q&A window and uh, I'll address them as best I can. Um, again, my name is Jasper Lawler, market analyst here. I'm going to cover some of those sort of major markets typically traded uh, with CMC Markets clients. Um, probably the most sensible place to start just with, uh, with equity markets and um, why not start here in the UK? Quite, um, quite the volatile week last week. For those of you who attended uh, last week's webinar, uh, we had been talking about a, a double top pattern here. Not often that they work out just so, um, no, so aggressively. Um, obviously, the target for this double top was it was closer to 6,500, I believe. Um, you know, it's obviously collapsed all the way down, and um, seeing a good recovery today. Um, technically, we can put it down to this being the kind of extreme in sentiment back in October, and then on the 16th, that was the um, the opening price, and then we had a br big breakthrough there. So it's kind of that um, that high and that opening price in this instance is kind of a zone of, of potential demand coming back in the market when you come back down, and, and that's what we're seeing. Um, <coughs> and uh, if we pop over to the, uh, the short-term chart, you can see at the moment we're just getting a bit of reaction from, um, I think we've got the 21-hour moving average and um, and then the, this this prior low. So you know what you see in a, in a downtrend, isn't it? You see a new low form, and you, you, know, you bounce higher, break lower, come back, and that previous high will often test the prior low. So you know these are the kind of, when you get an extreme trend like that, these are the really kind of golden opportunities um, when you get a kind of bounce back like bounce back like that, and obviously it's not always perfect. Um, but as long as you're, if you get the direction of the trend right, and you're, um, you know, you've got your risk above a prior high, um, you know, then you're, you know, you're potentially set to benefit. We've moved above this little short-term high here, so I think perhaps this move that we're seeing. Is going to be a bit more substantial than some of these that we saw last week, and um, you know, obviously, it's one of the worst weeks we've had in years for stock markets. And so we're just getting a bit of a bounce back today, not entirely unrelated to the fact that oil prices are a bit higher today. Um, we've got Brent up around 1.8%, uh, uh, WTI up around 1%. Um, I just posted a. Uh, Longer term look at uh, Brent. If we have a quick look at that here, because obviously, um, you know, part of the reason that we've had these declines in in um, the the indices is because of the energy shares involved there, and then the kind of repercussions that um, the lower energy prices have across industries related to these um, these energy stocks. So um, definitely worth, even if you're not trading or even though it's in a very strong trend, even if you're not trading it, worth following it because it's, it's certainly a big influence on, on markets at the moment. <laughs> this is the monthly chart, you know, very simply, uh, simply done, obviously. But this, you know, these were the significant levels that we recently broke through. You can see we obviously got a, a touch there. You can see this monthly chart got a rebound, but came straight below. And this is actually a 200-month a uh, moving average, and you can see it kind of as the, uh, the stopping point of the collapse in 2008. Um, so it could be again, and we obviously right are around the $60 mark, which is what a lot of the um, oil ministers have been talking about from oil producing countries as a potential, potential bottom in prices. So 60 could be a place that we get a bit of a bounce. But um, you know, again, you know, you can see from, from 2008 the extent that it's, it's possible to fall in, in oil or any market. So um, Really, ideally, you probably want to be looking for some signs of exhaustion, such as a sort of long wick candle, kind of hammer type pattern, as you see here, before going substantially long the market. 
obviously in the short term it's um it's slightly different and um you know you can see some little areas of opportunity but even here I highlighted before that you, know, you get kind of engulfing candles like sticks like this but against the trend it in a sharp trend like this it doesn't go too far what we had over the the weekend all was is that um some of the oil ministers referenced um you know no change in policy at OPEC even if oil prices drop to 40 and so and and basically dismissing the chance of any emergency OPEC meeting to to change the decision that was reached um not to not to cut production so back to the indices um this is the um the Germany thirty and this is a daily chart. Just looking at some Fibonacci levels here. Um you can see there's a bit of a confluence taking place. If you're if you're just using the low here, because we had kind of two spikes, you know, it's a bit uh, you could use this or this, but I tend to not want to use such a kind of extreme spikes uh when when they're so far away from the body of the candlestick. And and you know if you do use just the uh, the low prices of these two candlestick these sorry the um, the close here and the and the low here of this candlestick that triggered the kind of up move um, then we see this confluence in around here and it does just correspond with this this prior kind of little little peak that we had here so we we've already got a bit of a bounce there but um you know potentially we could see still a slight move lower down to this sort of 9520 type area um the big one this week um in terms of european data will probably be on wednesday we have the uh, the cpi data and um that's expected to be 0.3% and um probably just going to add to calls for the, the European Central Bank to, to increase uh, monetary stimulus. stimulus. Um, that's a good thing for the, the Germany 30, typically, you know, any increased chance of, of stimulus. And that probably partially explains why the, the, the Germany 30 has not crashed off um, under the weight of lower oil prices quite the way the, the UK 100 has. Obviously, in the future, we have um, BP and Shell and some other large um you know all all type com uh, all energy type companies and um uh, we also have north sea oil so we are sort of um partial producers of oil in the uk so not necessarily complete beneficiaries um <coughs> of the lower oil prices as as a as a nation Switching over to the US, you know, they've they've seen their, their fair share of, of sell off here. For those of you trading the US thirty, um I um I like to use this uh fifty five, but it's pretty similar to the, the fifty period SMA and you can see we're finding a bit of support off there at the moment and it does kind of correspond to uh, you know, we move through this this high, um this former all time high what we've actually ended up finding support as was just really kind of this low slash the um just the, the you can see on these three candlesticks here they all had kind of a a, a close an open and a close in um and, and an open sorry in a similar vicinity and that's kind of what we're finding some support on at the moment that little confluence of area but um you know that if you if you're talking about highs and lows it's definitely the trend has turned lower so it's a matter of whether you know this this short downtrend can be broken and um and we can resume the long term uptrend you know you probably got a default towards assuming that um the uptrend is going to continue because still um the liquidity conditions are pretty ample from the central banks but i think we've just seen a bit of a, a scare off partly because of these oil prices but i think also largely just because it's been a certain period of time since the fed have turned off their qe and even though during this period we saw an increase in QE from the Bank of Japan. Uh, there's been an increase in political uncertainty over there. Um, that's been reduced somewhat because Prime Minister Abe in Japan um, got re-elected with a large majority this weekend. So theoretically, that would mean that um, his uh, 
you know, his mandate for increasing his QE program has been sort of substantiated by the voters. So a couple of markets to look at, sort of Japan-wise, obviously the yen, but I was going to have a look at the Nikkei. And that was just a longer term interesting thing. I thought on the, uh, we had the, just had this channel taking place on the Japan 225, and we're just running into a bit of support in that area. So potentially this re-election um, could trigger some further stimulus, perhaps not monetary, because we only just did have an increase to the QE program from Japan a few weeks ago. Um, so it might actually end up being more of a sort of um, uh, you know, parliamentary sort of uh, increase in government programs, uh, that kind of thing. Um, you know, which 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 should be good for um, Japan listed companies, uh, but not quite as sort of globally beneficiary <coughs> of of such global benefit. Um, dollar yen, um, it's not necessarily trading off this uh, Japanese election. Um, I mean, we are seeing some kind of positive sentiment, but it's, it's towards the dollar, obviously not the yen. And um, you know, if if the election was kind of a good thing for Japan, you'd kind of expect the the yen to um, appreciate. But what I guess this could be indicating is that um, you know Abe, part of his policy or part of his three arrow policy is um, essentially weakening the yen to quantitative easing. So. You know, this may be all we see in terms of the correction from the the dollar yen rally. The big one will be this this kind of 17.35. I has it. I have it as, but you could argue it's just this low here, or even this low that's been formed recently. A break in, in this vicinity, you know, it's going to be sort of A, B, C, and then we're looking closer to this 55, and maybe down here somewhere, maybe towards these lows. But I, I'm. And that that may, you know, I'm I'm assuming we might get a bit of a run higher, and then a big test will be up in the 120 vicinity. That's when we'll start running, and you can see on the RSI highlighted in a, in a prior webinar this kind of oversold area. You can see on the last time with that run up, and then the kind of correction we had a run, and then drop down, a correct back to the area, down and down lower. This initial correction has been a bit larger, so it may not quite have the energy to get back up there. And if it does, maybe that's it's on the way to higher prices. But it's definitely worth monitoring this um, the, the, the sort of overbought area of that 70 on the daily RSI for the dollar yen. You, know, you see a, a move off there, and then you see start, prices start to roll over. It's just a just a confluence of indications that maybe we're going to get and we're going to see that kind of A, B, C, and then C the next leg down. Um, so I was talking about um, global central banks. Obviously, um, you know, one of the one of the points of concern is that the Fed ended QE. Um, then, or, you know, we had the Bank of Japan adding some stimulus. Then we had um, the ECB um, giving strong indications that they might be about to introduce a QE program of their own. There was definitely a distinct amount of disappointment when that didn't happen, and that was kind of running around here. Um, was when the ECB didn't announce anything on the meeting. We saw a drift lower, but just wasn't able to sustain below 123. We've seen a good correction higher, and we're just struggling a bit at this round number 125. Um, we do have this uh, European CPI, but also the big data this week is German confidence data, which would be a bit more supportive of a stronger euro, because uh, we uh, potentially, uh, just because we've seen a bit of a recovery in the ZEW and the German IFO um, in last month's readings. Um, so if that continues, you know, if investor and business sentiment's improving a bit there, um, you know, that's good for the Eurozone economy. It's a leading indicator, and uh, you know that could be the catalyst to see, uh, you know, that alongside a lack of action from the ECB at the last meeting, could be a catalyst for the euro to run higher. And it, and I think it definitely correlates. The, this run higher in the euro definitely correlates to the kind of move lower that we've seen in the DAX and other European indices, uh, the Germany 30 as we call it, um, just in that the ECB haven't actually got on and done some actual 
government or government bond purchases or even corporate bond purchases or even just indicated that there is a certain timeline or a certain set of conditions needed and then the QE program will begin. Um, it's all a bit up in the air at the moment. Um, so lots of talk of the possibilities and definitely saying that the um, Q, QE is a, is a possibility but not actually um, come out and said it. So that, um, alongside on the same topic of central banks, um, China kind of offset their their uh, interest rate cut with some more tightening in terms of sort of loan requirements. So a bit of easing here, a bit of tightening there, kind of offset each other. So not so much stimulus, and um, and then just the fact that the non-farm payrolls data that we saw from the Fed. Um, let's have a look at the the SPX while we're talking about that. Um, was uh, pretty good. I mean, uh, the best in years. And uh, we saw some impressive retail sales data at the end of last week. Wage data that accompanied the NFP data uh, was also good. So data indicating that the U.S. economy is getting a lot better um, is just you know, fuel for the Fed tightening interest rates, raising rates sooner than might otherwise have been anticipated. So not only have they ended QE, um, but, you know, they managed to be ending the, the zero bound interest rate policy um, sooner than was expected. And, um, you know, that's just sort of caused a bit of a pullback in markets. That's my take on it. A little bit of a kind of liquidity driven story, which, you know, largely explains the run up in prices that we've had in the last couple of years. Last few years. Um, this this was just a, a weekly chart, a longer term perspective. You see this in a lot of the indices here, but I thought it was quite pronounced in the the S and P. Um, see a similar pattern, sort of here, maybe here, not quite as long, um, but you know, around the kind of tops, you do can you can get these these kinds of patterns. So certainly the first sign of a larger correction. Whether that correction actually takes place, it could even just be something like this, um, or it just gets reverses and we see new highs by the end of the week. Remains to be seen, but it's you know, certainly something to be aware of um, when uh, when buying into this dip, that this weekly pattern. Um, it's quite a big way, uh, big week for the UK and the big barometer for that is the is cable. Now we can see technically at the moment this is a daily chart obviously. Um again I've just kind of kind of got my you know my uh lines of potential resistance drawn in from these prior lows and just the kind of what I thought was the kind of two beginnings of this kind of sideways congestion area. You can see it's it's basically worked again here that in confluence with this declining trend line is where we're seeing prices come off at the moment and um, quite quite a weak looking candle and also just not quite making it over this 50 level denoting a, an uptrend as you can see it's failed there and there they are assigned the 50 and then we're coming again looks setting up for another failure on the short term chart it did look a bit more um, it did look a bit more positive we were holding above the moving average but then dropped off fairly significantly today. Um, not really necessarily on any particular uh, data driven by today, but more in perhaps preparation for tomorrow. We've got the, the bank stress tests results from the Bank of England. Um, we have the Bank of England financial stability report and um, uh, um <coughs> What was it? Uh, hold on. A blank here. Let's pull up the calendar. CPI data, was it? Hmm. Apologies. This is when you have these little lapses, is when the old CNC markets calendar comes in. It was CPI. Okay, I thought so. Um, so that kind of inflation data obviously kind of setting up for um, you know how urgent it is for the Bank of England to actually act and uh, we'll have the Bank of England minutes on Wednesday 
um, as well as the unemployment rate, average earnings, and uh, obviously, so we have this, the inflation plus the unemployment and earnings data together, um, plus the minutes of um, the last meeting a couple of weeks ago, give us a pretty good clue going into the end of the year where the Bank of England are going to be in terms of um, you know their first rate hike. It's looking at the moment like Bank of England are a fair bit behind the uh, the US, but economic data has actually improved a little bit in the um, in the UK since the um, since the policy decision just in the last couple of weeks. Saw some better PMI data, for example. Um, so uh, that, I think that's partly why the Bank of England are going to be changing their policy in terms of when they release all this data next year. They're kind of putting all the releases together. Um, just to avoid this kind of pointless two-week lag, where we're looking at you know a decision that was made on two-week-old data, they're going to release the minute. I'm not quite sure if this starts in 15 or 16, uh, 2015 or 16, but um, they're going to be releasing the minutes at the same time as the uh, the statement. So then, you know, you have a much better idea what's um, or the decision at least you have a much better feeling as to how it all came together. And when there's the quarterly inflation report, that will come out at the same time as well, obviously once a quarter. Uh, um, so, yeah, this this trend line is, is key for, for cable at the moment. Um, we've come off it pretty strong here. It looks like it's going to hold. Um, but if we were to see some kind of bounce above... Now that's when we could start seeing a move up to um, the 158 type area, and then potentially this um, 158.75. But you know, the trend's still very much kind of down on a slightly longer term basis. Um, that would be significant breaking above this high. You know, that would be something along the lines of a double bottom pattern, but it's a bit messy. It looks more really like a continuation pattern at the moment. So I think the assumption probably is that we're going to break the lows. Mm -hmm. Now, let's, um, we talked briefly about, I think I showed you the Brent chart, let's have a look at, at oil. We had already talked about it, but um, let's have a look at the shorter time frame. We, you know, we breezed through all these longer term levels. And you saw the same thing on the, uh, the Brent chart, this is uh, WTI. And it, you know, it almost looks like it's a... Um, sort of bear flag but it doesn't quite make you can really call this a trend this is a bit of an aberration and um, you know this is a bit of a kind of long extended flag more of a kind of wedge and so we've the the height of this pattern we've probably about seen um, you can do it using this Fibonacci tool it's not exactly how it's intended to be used but it kind of serves the purpose so if we take that height of the pattern there extend it to the breakout area 100% would come in right around that sort of 46 type mark and obviously these are the lows of, at the end of the sell-off around 40 so we, you know, we potentially could still have some ways to go you can see this has worked a little bit so far where we bounced off there was this 61.8% uh, 61 of the pattern was mar marked to that uh, if that correction ended at 50 moved lower so 100 could be the next stop um, so again, keep that in mind if you're uh, going along the market. You know you've got to have some deep pockets to withstand any um, any movements in, in time being. Um, CFTC cot data on the futures market for oil has suggested that um, a lot of hedge funds and speculators are increasing their bullish bets on oil. You know, just seeing lower prices and the idea that um, it's got to turn around eventually. But you know, you could still feel a bit of pain before that does happen. Um, but it's it's really the same story in terms of in terms of oil. We're probably not going to get, you know, we're not going to have any kind of drastic change. We're going to see the inventories data from the from the U.S. on Wednesday, but really we had a couple of reports last week indicating global demand is going to be on the is going to be waning in 2015. You know, we're not going to see another update from the um, International Energy Agency or OPEC for another month. But even if we do, it's probably only going to be to the downside. And um, 
and uh, the supply picture remains the same for the time being. At some point, uh, you'd imagine some of these U.S. shale producers are going to start coming on uh, coming offline. There might be some more kind of prominent reports on that, and um, in you know in which case supply is being gradually reduced. That kind of readdresses the uh, supply demand imbalance that we're seeing at the moment. Um, quick look at gold. I had this um, potential bull flag on the short term. So we're on the four-hour chart here, just to give you the slightly long-term pictures that we had this declining trend line which is not perfect um, didn't quite reach it here it's more like the moving average that, that worked on that occasion but we saw a move above the 50 day moving average held the 21 broke the trend line so quite a good setup um, in terms of a break higher and then that cor corresponded on the short time frame with a uh, what you could deem a kind of quite nice channel that broke higher part of a potential bull flag. Then again, I've used the same Fibonacci tool to project a potential target of the pattern up here on uh, 1285. But we've just been tracking down back towards the long-term trend line. And if we move back below the trend line, you know, the, the pattern's not looking so good on the short term. Um, but if we can hold this, you know, this is a potential area of demand, um, potential swing area for the price. And then obviously the Next test will be to break the high, and then we'll be looking a bit better for, for reaching that um, that pattern objective. Okay, well, I think we're running into the uh, last few minutes here. Um, is there any particular products um, anyone else would like me to to anyone would like me to cover that I haven't done so already? I've, I've really mainly just covered the sort of main things that are of interest to CMC clients. For those of you who trade currencies, worth straying out of your usual comfort zone um, because look at this chart in the dollar ruble, it's getting absolutely obliterated here. If you're a trend follower, um, you know, this is the stuff of dreams. Mm. Obviously, at some point, it's got to sell out. You know, if you're one of those people that likes to sell into strength, well, you know, good luck on this occasion. It's just going up by two and a half percent, 150, 200 pips every day. But at some point, you're going to see it this. You know, this has got to capitulate a bit. Um, I mean, capitulate. You, should, you know, there's got to be a strong reaction, I would imagine. Once it finds its top, I think it will probably fall right down to 50 again as a round number. Um, just getting a quick chat question here. Uh, will the DAX see a rebound this week? Um, it's going to be largely contingent on these um, these couple of data points, I believe. Um, what I what I haven't mentioned, which is probably the most important thing of the week, which apologies for that, um, will largely determine sentiment. I'm sort of alluded to it, but didn't actually mention it expressly. Is the um, the the statement from the U.S. Fed? Obviously, that's not so European-related, but all these global indices are fairly tied in together. And this fall in liquidity, as I mentioned, um, because of the drawback from QE from the Fed, is what I believe to be largely behind this this move lower in uh, in stocks. So, if we see, you know, if this um, better data, the better em employment, wage, retail sales data, leads the Fed to remove their considerable time language from their statement or something of a similar line. Um, maybe they change it, but keep it a bit. M a move away from that, you know, I think that's probably the trigger for the next leg lower in um, in markets. That's, that meeting's on Wednesday. They also have their, e it's gonna be a bit more than normal because it's the Fed statement, it's the economic projections and the press conference. So what I, I suspect could happen is that they maybe will still leave the language in there um, even though this would be as good a time as any to uh, to remove it, to sort of imply how long it will be until they do their first rate hike. They're saying a considerable period of time for now. Um, I think they perhaps they don't want to rock markets into the end of the year, particularly after this sell-off, so they might not remove it. But I suspect they may substantially improve their economic projections. And we're going to see this kind of dot plot in terms of uh, when they think you know, what do they think interest rates will be at the end of 2015 and the end of 2016. And I think they'll probably um, increase those projections. So so they'll probably give us a warning that they're moving towards the 
um, bigger rate hike just through those projections. And so that may be enough to kind of keep um, you know key markets happy, and that could be a cause for a rebound, uh, not only in U.S. markets but also yeah the DAX and the and the, and the FTSE as well to some extent. So going to be pretty data dependent as always, and there is just a lot of data crammed into this week because you know basically next week's Christmas, so it's, it's all being done getting done this week, but should make it for a, a good week of trading. Get all your trades in done this week, and then have a, have you know have a rest over Christmas. Um, if that's it. Thank you all very much for attending. Um, good luck with the trading this week, as I said. This is Jasper Lawlett signing off for this week. Thank you.